Good morning and welcome back to Morning Express. I am Sophia Wanuna. In the next half hour, we are all about your image and branding, perhaps. Very important elements, especially beginning a new year. Some of you may be looking for a job, change of jobs, or whatever, anything else you may be working on. Very important to always put some of these elements into focus. And Derek Banga will be talking to us about why it is important to focus on that. Uh, but a quick traffic update from Matriro to this morning. Um, Somebody is asking about whether there's a relationship between schools reopening and jam because things have just gone crazy. But also everybody else is back to work. Um, so, yeah, the devil at Langata Road is back. So it's crazy there. Traffic all the way from barracks going down. Jogo Road should remain uh, traffic free like forever meaning as a three minutes ago when this was put up things are not bad in that direction uh, we are away from Kabeta to ABC place hardly moving so yeah they are standstill there the uh, Riara Road is also surprisingly smooth even with Makini and Riara open today uh, Mombasa Road is still a mess I understand from GM there was that accident earlier on in the morning uh, but things um, moving on uh, Ngong Road moving smoothly again this morning, so not too bad. And uh, we'll keep you po posted on any other updates we get as we continue with the live show. So Derek Banger, who's a communication and consultant, uh, communications consultant with Public Image, is with me in studio to talk more about uh, your image. If you have a question for him, you can feel free to uh, send a message, double two one double five, and you can tweet me at Sophia Wanuna. I'll be able to see it right here uh, on my little iPad. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure, as always. Happy New Year, Sophia. Happy, happy New Year. How have you been? I've been terrific. How about yourself? Awesome. Great. Happy to be back to work. You're looking lovelier than ever before, oh. might I add that. <laughs> oh, awesome. Not just saying that because I'm hosting you this no, morning. <laughs> not just that. It's really it. Okay. So the beginning of the year, we mm. thought one of the important things that people need to know, there are those who will be looking for jobs, mm. those thinking to just get themselves better, some have resolved, you know what, this year I'm going to be the best I can be. What is it important? Why is it important to focus on image? Well, you know, as I have said before mm. on many occasions, is that your image is really the external representation of your yeah. personal brand. And I talk a lot about personal branding, what you want people to think about you, mm -hmm. how you want to be remembered. But your image is really your entry point. It's the visual, it's what we see. Yeah. Uh, so for example, how you are dressed, how you carry your body, mm -hmm. and then obviously how you communicate and speak. So it's important, especially as you said, for people who are perhaps looking to take that next step in their careers, yeah. looking for a new job. Obviously the beginning of the year, this mm. is the time when people are doing a lot of that kind of soul searching yeah. and looking for new momentum in terms of their lives. So maybe you might need some, what I call, rebrand positioning. Uh -huh. um, so maybe not a 360 degree change, but maybe some tweaking. Yeah. Even successful people might need to tweak their image and their brand. Yeah. Why is it that many people do not realize how important it is, the whole image idea, that uh, some people listen, till then they hear this discussion, they're like, oh, oh, actually, maybe I should work on that. Why is it not outright clear to I everybody that yeah. it's important? I think a lot of people are fixated on the traditional routes to success. Okay. Working hard, mm -hmm. putting in the hours, making sure perhaps that I'm talking to the right people. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, they may not necessarily focus on this, not thinking that it's that important. Yeah. However, I think, uh, I certainly believe that your image is, 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 is everything. It's yeah. vital. It's as important as making sure that you work hard at the office, making sure that you send out as many CVs as yeah. possible. Um, it's important that also people are able to see that you are sending the right image. Yeah. And you may be sending the wrong message. That's another thing. Okay. So you need to do sort of a self-assessment. What am I sending out? You know, you're talking here with your guests previously mm -hmm, about mm -hmm, perception. Mm -hmm. Perception is reality for yeah. somebody else. Yeah. So make sure you're sending out the right messages. A and who needs to be caring about their image? Does everybody do or do st mm. can students just go, you know, do their own thing? I'm in school, I'm in campus <laughs> anyway, who cares? Uh, or I'm in this industry, I'm a watch per watchman or I'm a waiter mm. or I'm this and the other. Is there a certain group of people that need to be more concerned and looking into their image? Well, Sophia, I believe everybody needs to be concerned with their image. It doesn't yeah. matter what you are doing. At some point, you want to perhaps move ahead in life. You mm -hmm. want to do something mm -hmm. a little bit different. Now, yeah. listen, for a student in college, you may say to yourself, hey, this is how I represent myself. This is how I dress. This is how I talk. But how do you want to be seen, heard, and remembered over the long term? Yeah. And especially for people who are at that stage in their lives, who in the next few years might be going to the job market, you need to start creating a brand for yourself. It's yeah. becoming literally the CEO of your own brand. Any company in the world worth its salt will have a branding strategy. Yeah. So you need to start looking at yourself as a product. How do I market myself? And how do I 
brand myself mm. and then hopefully consistently consistently that's an important showing aspect. Off that thing. Yeah. listen I'm not here to say that you have to wear a three-piece suit even to, to, go, <laughs> to go to Nakumat yeah. on a Saturday but there has to be something consistent in terms of how you extol your personal brand values. Yeah. How does one then figure out which is the way to go about branding themselves, the image they need mm. to cut out? How do you know? Because, you know, there are different careers, there are different elements. Mm. Somebody's just out of college. They're trying to figure that out. How do you know which way to go? Well, part of it is perhaps take a self-assessment test, talk to people who you know and trust, okay. who can give you uh, sort of honest feedback mm -hmm. in terms of how you come across. So whether it's your verbal communication, your written communication in the office, everything as I mentioned before to do with your body language, your handshake, your smile, your grooming, mm. uh, your business etiquette, all of these areas which, you know, operate within this soft skills sort yes, of pantheon. Yes. And then just ask people, so what do you think about this? And then say, do I need to improve? Mm. And then sort of look and say, okay, well, maybe this needs a little bit of tweaking, adjusting, or I need to to yeah. work on this. Some people imagine when you're talking about image and working on it mm. and even maybe getting a consultant is a lot of money. It means I'm needing to get this very expensive wardrobe. But that's not necessarily the case, no, is it's it? absolutely not the yeah. case. In terms of wardrobe and dress specifically, mm. you can present the appropriate image for whatever industry you're in within your budget. This is not about dressing in the most expensive clothes. In fact, if anything, the people who spend too much on clothes uh, the ones who might have a little bit of a problem. All right, I, I'm, I'm looking at you <laughs> yeah. and thinking perhaps of the number of shoes in your closet. No, I'm just <laughs> I'm yeah, joking yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. No, but what I'm saying here is all of these things can be done within, within a budget. It's not about dressing in expensive designer clothes. That it's about, it. yeah. it's about say specifically with dressing, is dressing appropriately. Uh, you can own a couple of items of clothing, mm -hmm. but if they fit you well, if they are tailored, if they're appropriate for your body shape, then they can last you, you know, a lifetime. Yeah. So just to clarify, it's not just about what you're dressing that, you know, no. speaks to your image. There's also the elements of your grooming, mm -hmm. of course. What else is in that package when we're talking about grooming uh, image? What uh, 360 um, perspective do we have on that okay. that we so need to be looking into? So you've mentioned the, the dressing yes. and the grooming. That's really important. I'll include the body language inside there. Yeah. I'll include the way that you communicate, the way that you speak how you use your voice, how you talk. Mm -hmm. I've shared these statistics with you before. You know, 55% of how you are judged is based on what we see visually. 38% is based on your voice, your mm -hmm. tone of voice, how you use this wonderful instrument that God has, has given you in yeah. terms of communicating. And then there are all the other aspects of soft skills, like your etiquette at work, how you treat other people. I'm in the process of completing a book right now. Wow. And that book is loosely based on what? On civility or lack thereof in our society. How mm. men and women in, in, in our country, yeah. frankly, treat each other, whether it is at the office or it is on the weekend. Yes. And so it also involves that. Um, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you talk to people? Mm. Um, what, are your, what are your manners like, frankly? Yeah, so that one is a book out now that you're on the book. <laughs> When is Maybe it I'm a little bit early in plugging the book. <laughs> okay. uh, I'll say a couple of months at best. Couple but of hopefully months. soon. Hopefully I'll be right back here on this couch talking about it. You will it definitely be back. Yes. So 55%, you know, focus going into the outside. Mm. That's huge. That's mm. a lot. Th that is. That is a lot. And that's why you shouldn't take this for granted. Yeah. So you need to start doing a couple of, uh, of things. First of all, as I said, where is my environment? What, what message am I sending out there to my target market mm -hmm. or to the public? And then I'm going to dress appropriately for this. And again, it's not about dressing up. It's not about dressing down. It's about being appropriate and sending the right message. Yeah. Okay. Then we go into now how you carry, how you carry your, body. your body. When you walk into the room, do people notice you for the right reasons? Do you have an impact? Uh, for example, when you meet people, when you're interacting with them one-on-one, -on -one, mm. uh, what is your nonverbal communication like as far as face concerned? I mean, yes. these are all minor details, but they're really important, the grand the grand scheme of things. Mm. And then, as I said, we move on now to how you use your voice. So it may be on the phone, it may be face-to-face, -face, it may be meetings, and all of that. Uh, how do you position yourself? Yeah. And then it moves on from there. Okay. I remember the, my dress, my dress, I'll just take us back to dressing before we move on to the mm. other elements. And, of course, coming from a good place to just be able to, a sad event, but to a good place to be able to champion that everybody, you know, it's on them, mm. their decisions, what they wear. But in as far as image is concerned, 
at some level, it cannot just be, it's because I want to wear it that I'm going to do it. You have to put into consideration what who's my audience and who am I speaking and communicating mm. to, who do I want to impact, right? I think two very important things came out of that whole yeah. saga, uh, which was very sad, by the way. Yeah. And of course, Extremely. I start off by saying, cannot condone the behavior right. of, of, of those men. Yeah. But here is first thing, women are going to be judged on a different standard. That is the bottom line. Yeah. Uh, you ladies are going to be judged a different standard. The society we live in, uh, so you have to perhaps work a little harder, certainly in that area of how you're dressing. That's okay. number one. Number two, wh where are you going? Whom are you going to see? There are going to be people who are going to express their opinion. Now, they may do, you know, the vile act that some of those mm -hmm. men do, or yeah. they will, you know, men will tut tut themselves and say things. But whatever the case is, how those men react, mm. those men are telling you, or rather you are sending those men a signal in terms of what you're dressing. So you might say, I am comfortable, this is an expression of, 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 how, I, of how I dress, uh, this is the body that God gave me, God yes. bless you. But you've got to realize that you are going to send those messages even if they're unintended. So again, if you are, you know, if you're somebody who says, well, I want to make sure I'm sending the right message, this is the environment I'm going into, mm. this is what I'm going to wear at this environment. When I'm in a different environment, perhaps I can dress this way. So it's just about thinking a little bit. More about. About, okay, I'm dressing this morning. I'm going to a certain place in town. I'm going to dress like this. I'm dressing this evening. I'm going perhaps out for a restaurant or a club. Maybe I can dress like this. Okay. That's so, what I'm saying. Yeah. On the non-verbal, it's really from the walking itself yeah. as well. You know, yeah. you don't want to be walking in, for example, to an interview and oh. you're slouching, looking like, oh, my God. In, in I don't think I'm going to get this. <laughs> it's going to be tough. In fact, it's funny because the body works in such a way. The way that you carry your body changes hormones within our body. And there's testosterone, for example, mm -hmm. which men and women have, which is responsible for you feeling confident, authoritative, dominant, feeling like I can win this interview. And you know that if you, for example, slouch, or you keep having your limbs touching each other, there are a lot of studies that have been done hands, like that, yeah. you're actually increasing or decreasing the level of testosterone and increasing a stress hormone called cortisol. Right. So think about it. You're not even helping yourself by carrying your body in that way. But if you actually carry your body in a way to increase those levels of testosterone, you again for that interview or for that job review or your performance mm -hmm. um, review or asking for a salary increase, Literally carrying your body can change the way that you actually behave or perform yeah. in those circumstances. So again, people need to be aware of this. And knowledge is power. And, uh, you know, as I said, this can help people going forward who are looking to perhaps reinvigorate yeah. their careers. And I know eye contact goes a long way to express and show confidence, <laughs> to show that I know what I'm talking about. For sure. I am here because I believe I should be here and should perhaps get this job or whatever. Um, so people should not be shifty eye, like, woohoo, all over the place, but the person they're talking to. Yeah, I think most people would know that, that yeah. if you don't look someone in the eyes, people are imagining all the worst things. I've never had anything positive about not looking somebody there. Now, it's not a staring contest, as I like to say, yeah, but, don't you know, stare down the, person. the eyes are the window of the soul. So you've got to look people in the eye if you want them to believe what you're saying, if you have conviction, and again, just in terms of confidence and credibility. Mm. Eye contact, perhaps a nice smile every yeah. once in a while. You don't have to turn into a, a laughing idiot, but you, <laughs> you know, it's okay to, <laughs> to smile. <laughs> the entire interview. <laughs> no, yeah. of course. So you've got to do these things, obviously, within the context of you know whatever the, the the interview or thing might be yeah. but also in terms of knowing that I am sending a direct message and you know a lot of this is read subconsciously by the other person mm -hmm. I don't have to stand there and say why is this person not smiling or not looking in the eye it's a part of my brain which automatically is making registering those, all of that yeah there okay you go. Um, then there's people who argue that I'm shy and yet mm. I'm in this position or in this new year I want to work on my um, you know credibility I want to work on how people perceive me as a confident person who is good at what they say they can do how does somebody then in their image and making sure they and um, you know presenting the best of themselves deal with such issues as shyness that would yeah. come in the way now personality does come into play some yeah. people are a little bit shy like you said they're retiring, they're wallflowers. My advice to a lot of these people is you have to get over yourself. Mm -hmm. The world is not forgiving, yeah. <laughs> certainly in terms of being seen, heard, and remembered, and standing out to people who have that sort of personality. But having said that, there are things that you can do working within your personality to be able to stand out when you are networking. Mm -hmm. But it's true. 
the most fascinating brands are the ones that win. The brands that stand out, and we're talking here, the brands people, mm. are the ones that win in this game. So you've got to find a way to be able to stand out, to overcome. But okay, let's take a specific example. You go to some networking event, you're shy, you don't like going to talking to people, yes. introducing people. Yes. Here is a trick you can do. Come with someone, a friend or buddy. Mm. Their job is to bring people and introduce them to you. So literally, they're your... <laughs> wing person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wing, your man, wing, wing girl. Man woman. Yeah. Their job is simply to go, bring someone over and introduce them to you. So there are ways of overcoming um, some of these personality, um, I don't call them deficiencies, yes. but where you might not be somebody, for example, who likes to go out and meet people or you're sort yeah. of shy. So, for example, like here at KTN, we have mm. this, the presenter season two coming up. Mm. And there'll be lots of people coming out to audition for the same. And as you've been talking about standing out, somebody might be sitting there and thinking and trying to figure out, how do I go for this audition and stand out? Mm. There are very many young people looking for jobs. Mm. What is it you say to them about standing out? Because even with various fields, they're flooded. There's all kinds of professionals. Sure. There are very many journalists across the board. So how does one, as you address perhaps that particular issue, ensure you are the one that, you know, makes that impact? Leaves everybody asking, who's that Derek? Do mm. you remember that, you know? Yeah. Great question, Sophia. I alluded to the fact earlier that we're all products and you're in the business of selling yourself. So USP, your unique mm. uh, selling proposition. You need to find something about you that nobody else has. So in terms of your image, you perhaps can stand out with maybe the clothes that you wear. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't necessarily want to be neutral. Now yeah. again, within reason, you don't yes. want to be neutral. That's one way to stand out in that crowded field of all these young men and women mm -hmm. who are going to be applying, hopefully, to be the next presenter. Yes. Maybe something unique about the way that you communicate. Maybe your application can be a little bit different. You know, send a video where everybody else is sending an email application. Mm -hmm. It's about finding that differentiating factor. We live in a world of differentiation. Yes. And the people who differentiate themselves in a positive way in this crowded field, which is hyper competitive, of course, that's mm -hmm. what you're saying, mm -hmm. are the ones who are able to go through. So what I would specifically say to those people who perhaps are applying for this um, program yeah. is to find something about you that is going to be different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. Avoid the kawa and do something that's a do little bit different. Yeah. Mm. And you do a lot of trainings, Derek, on image across the board as you do this. Yes. What are some of the challenges, questions that people will ask in as far as image is concerned? What are some of those areas that people struggle with in cutting out that image? Yes, well, as you said, I do obviously quite a bit of training. I train yeah. corporate uh, corporates, I train groups, I also train individuals. Yes. Most people are looking just like your previous question is, how do I stand out? Mm. How do I make it to the next to the next level. Now, actually, what I found out, say, the last year, where I was doing a lot of training, mm -hmm. it was a lot of it had to do with communication skills. So how to present, how to stand up. And this is one of the simplest and easiest ways that you can stand out, is stand up at some sort of forum, mm. whether it's an office meeting, whether it's uh, somebody's birthday in the office, stand up and speak in public. Naturally, most of us are reticent. We don't like standing up yeah. and talking. We don't want the spotlight on mm -hmm. us. So that's something that I would um, ask a lot of people or advise people to do is find your voice and get up and speak. And mm -hmm. the only reason to speak really is to get up and to change the world. So speaking yeah. with conviction and that sort of thing. So I get a lot of questions regarding public speaking mm -hmm. and presentation skills and even things as how to put together a PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that a lot of people, again, can differentiate themselves. There are millions and millions of PowerPoint presentations that yeah. are done yeah. uh, over the course of one's working life. And one way to differentiate yourself is to make your presentation, your PowerPoint presentation, different. I get a lot of questions from, you know, frankly, I'll say men mm -hmm. who say, really, is oh, it yeah? that important? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, there are many men out there who really just don't care. No. It's just some, you know, fr fr frankly, trouser, they don't. chat, and yeah. walking on out. So, I, you know, I talk to a lot of men. You know, if you're buying a suit, if you're buying a shirt, if you're buying w wear a pair of jeans, make sure it. It, it fits you well. It's Thank <laughs> you for saying that, because those oversized, the ones that it's, you know, this yeah. line is like over yeah. here, baggy. They right. look like it's wearing them. Yeah, you know, you, you look like you're actually smuggling stones in your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, clothes that fit there. you well. Listen, Correct. I don't want to say that everybody should come and have fantastic bodies and you should look like you know like you're a male model. But wearing clothes that are 
that fit you is actually s is a huge signal mm. that you're sending out to your target market yeah. outside there. So I get a lot of questions regarding that. I think I also get a lot of questions from men regarding just the whole thing of grooming. Now, you know, I like to talk mm. about the 21st century man is evolved. His 19th century or 20th century cousin is gone. <laughs> you can't compare. Yes. So, you know, taking care that you are the freshest that you can be, that you, you know, you comb yeah, your hair every yeah, once in a while. Down for you, us, some of this you don't have grooming a beard elements. that looks like you're hiding in a bunker waiting for the end of the world. Some of these things. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I think, and in fact, the male grooming industry has become a multi billion dollar industry. It is. It is. So it's about sort of equipping yourselves. These are the tools to not only survive but thrive, certainly in this century, which will help you stand out. Mm -hmm. So just m making some of these things a little bit more important in the grand scheme of things yeah. as you go about your daily business. Yeah. So talk us through from head to toe because you said 55% of what people will focus on, will take home, will remember is what they see. Mm. They see you show up and that's what registers and sticks with most people. Okay. So let's begin of course with the hair. Okay. Um, are so we talking about men here or are we talking about Let's women? talk about both. Run, try okay. run them quickly. Okay. Through. So some will have dreadlocks, it's their style. Some will insist on having their own things, um, gel or whatever. How do you know that this is to stay with or not? And for women as well with okay so I, I think in fact for men when it comes to the hair on top of the head most men don't have a problem okay. yes some young men will want to express their personal style and have things like dreadlocks i tell young men we're in a conservative society if you want to go into the corporate world i can tell you dreadlocks put you at a disadvantage okay okay having said that if you want to have dreadlocks and that's an expression of your style personality by all means go for it mm. but consider the industry that you're going into right. are you in an industry where it's a little bit more lax or are you in an industry that's a little bit more straight laced for women when it comes to hair that's a topic that i it's <laughs> a long topic subject I, <laughs> I approach with trepidation obviously because women and their hair they're naturally attached to it. but again i tell women your hair is your crowning mm. glory but you want to have a hairstyle and again we're talking about people in the professional world that is suitable for that environment yes. that complements your overall personality and uh, is not going to be distracting. Mm -hmm. It should complement, not overwhelm. Yeah, we should not be like, woo, the whole time I'm just looking at your hair, I'm exactly. like, what is that exactly. on the head? I yeah. Okay. Then the face. So, let's, coming down the face. So, again, for men, just basic grooming is what we're talking about. That shave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> shave once in a while. Um, you know, there's so many products out there which can fit anybody's budget that you can use and pick up in the supermarket. Yeah. It's not necessarily you're forced to use soap and water. But, you know, that again is a man's prerogative mm -hmm. and choice. For ladies, I've said this all the time, women who wear makeup have, studies have shown, they progress faster in their careers. They actually get promoted faster. And having said that, it's not makeup that, gets that looks there. like <laughs> somebody has taken a bag of flour and <laughs> smacked you in the face. <laughs> your face is one color, your hands another. <laughs> it is appropriate makeup yeah. for the office. For the office. Just there are no two ways about to, it. To complement, to make better, yeah. not to change. Yeah, what the makeup is doing is really enhancing yeah, the wonderful see features you that you have. Next time when you're just going to the supermarket and be like, yeah. is this so and so? Exactly. Because you look so different without makeup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's your eyes, it makes your eyes pop out. It allows people to actually, when you talk, they watch your mouth as you move. It actually mm -hmm. makes you a better communicator. So, there are practical advantages to, again, applying makeup in a manner that is suitable and appropriate all right. let me say that again okay, okay? yes all uh, right so, so from there we come to upper moving. body <laughs> uh, and i guess a lot of the other than the dress is what you're doing with your hands you say it's an interview or whatever sure. it is yeah well in terms of dress i was just again just to go back to reiterate what i said mm -hmm. clothes should hopefully fit you well should be too big neither should they be too small yeah you 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 want to to, to make sure that they're suitable for your body shape, whether you're a man thank, or, you're, thank or you a woman. Thank you for saying that, body shape. Yes. yes. Whether you're a man or a woman. Now, um, in terms of the gestures, as you're saying, again, you, using these hands are uh, ways that you can reiterate, emphasize, add a little bit more to the words that are coming out of your, so your mouth. Be Close hands. You see that closed hands, I would say that is a close, that's a locked position. You're increasing okay. um, cortisol, you're okay. driving down testosterone. And this, he said, is not good. Yeah, that is the most uh, so open. closed position. So I would say, in most cases, open body language. So whether it's your hands or whether it's your, your legs, your limbs, 
you sort of don't want them touching each other in most professional settings. Mm. And not and I don't say that they can't. You can obviously do this, but yeah. not for prolonged periods of time. If you want to be an effective performer, again, you've got to look at the situation. Yeah. I'm going into a meeting. I'm going in for an interview. I'm going in for a networking situation. I want to have body language that's going to be friendly, open, and approachable. Mm. Yes. Okay, so I guess the rest down of it's all clothes that fit well. Um, not necessarily baggy, not too tight sure. to distract attention uh, from the subject. So that always is important. Talk yes. to us about colors. Let yes. me just mention shoes before I go to oh colors. Yeah, shoes. shoes. Um, I've heard Dusty it said that ones. women, <laughs> that is what they look like when they're evaluating a man mm -hmm. and whether he's worth taking up space on this earth. Yes. They look at them shoes. So for men, again, it is not buying the most expensive shoes. Absolutely not. But again, Women are going to focus on that, and they're going to be making some of these judgments, which frankly are superficial, but that's just the reality of the situation. Right. So again, having appropriate footwear, depending on the circumstances you're in and what, what it is that you're doing. But if you're going for an interview, wear appropriate, interview, uh, yeah. wear appropriate shoes or yeah. whatever the case might be. And not on socks. Even <laughs> if one wearing them and the trousers covering them, when you sit down, many men forget that we'll see when you... And we've seen some... Right. Of uh, politicians caught right. up in this weird I am, situation. I am not going to go. <laughs> not going to go there. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you, if you, you've got to have some professional pride in your appearance. <laughs> and if you're wearing torn socks, you know that's just maybe telling people, giving people the wrong message, wrong or signal. Or dirty ones, smelly ones. Exactly. Yeah. So oh, yeah, you didn't mention cologne and maybe some perfume sometimes to help out with the situation. Well, you know, the sense of smell is one of the strongest senses that we have. Yeah. And so wearing cologne or perfume well first of all you know if you take a step back you want to be the freshest that you can be there are no Shower. two ways two ways about it there is no compromise on hygiene it doesn't matter what your job involves you've got to check yourself before you wreck yourself mm -hmm. but having said that cologne or perfume is a great way to introduce um an ex another representation of your brand yeah but you don't want to overwhelm people shouldn't <laughs> smell you on the first on the sixth floor when you've just walked into the building so you've got That's to use so a modicum of <laughs> I'm also. just imagining that. Yeah, because Being in some studio people, and smelling Derek uh, all the way from the entrance. And you know, some of that is because people don't know how to apply it. Yeah. So they're still applying it on their clothes or they're spraying oh. it in the air and walking under that shower. I mean, those days are, are, are over. How do we apply it? So cologne perfume is applied to what you call your pulse points. Okay. So your pulse points would be here and the so inside here of your wrist, then the back of your hand. No, don't rub it. Rubbing don't actually... Rub it. Will, they call it, it's called bruising the perfume. It oh. changes it. It actually makes it weaker. So um, just spray and leave it. You can spray and leave it or you can dab. But don't, 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 don't actually rub okay. it. Mm -hmm. And up here? Yeah, on the back of your neck. Back uh, of the back neck. of your ears and the back of your neck. So not on clothes? Point. You really shouldn't apply it to, to clothes. Okay. Yes. What about those people who overly perspirate? They'll sweat it out. <laughs> the minute they're in front of that panel, in front of those people, <laughs> they've already done the cologne or the antiperspirant or deodorant. It yeah, doesn't it's, help. It's what, tough. Yeah. It's tough for those people. You just have to prepare yourself. Um, so whether it's wearing an extra layer of something so that it catches the perspiration, yeah. and I'm being judicious with my language, yes. um, or making sure you've, you've really worked on that deal. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you go, hey, listen, it's an unfortunate condition that yeah. some people might have. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, you're just going to have to deal with it. To deal with uh, it. Yeah, and How find measures to, yeah. to, to deal with it, that is. How important are colors, uh, you know, in terms of... Oh, colors. Yes. Yeah, you're talking about colors. The psychology of color is really important. The colors you wear send a signal. That red dress you're wearing is sending a signal. What is it saying? It is saying... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's actually, uh, red is one of the most powerful colors. Mm -hmm. So it's saying confidence, yes. vibrant, uh, and in charge okay. of overall. Of morning things. express. Right. <laughs> right. So it's a, it's a power color okay. is what we're saying. Orange is another power color. I think I've got touches of orange here. It falls right. in the same family. Blue is trust. Uh, it's a very popular color in business, banks, mm. financial institutions. So again, if you're in certain situations, you don't necessarily have to wear red all the time. Mm -hmm. You can bring in blue. And every color under the rainbow, green, yellow, black, you name it, has a meaning. Yeah. So it is incumbent upon people to find out what are the meanings of these colors and then wear them mm -hmm. at the appropriate time yes. so that you can actually silently influence your target market. Target market. So for an interview, for instance, because red, you say, is a power color. Yeah. Do you want to go into an interview I looking would, like no, your... I would, I would say for an interview, you, yeah. mm, you want to perhaps steer clear of red. Interview, you want to go with colors that are a little bit darker. 
okay um like. you don't necessarily want to wear the colors that are going to be too bold mm -hmm. so i'd stick to darker colors i'd go with the blue i'd go with more muted colors yes the interview is actually not the time for you to show off too much of your style personality mm -hmm. it's about you to show the people that you can do the job mm -hmm. the person who's interviewing you once you get the job then you can be a bit more expressive in terms of what you wear so yeah. i would say you want to be more conservative both for men and women at an interview and that goes there for everything hair jewelry colors that you wear you want to be a little bit more muted okay i'm just trying to refresh my page because it says it will not refresh my director tells me quite a number of questions oh. um on there but uh, my ipad over there refusing to uh, work with me, but I'll still I'm seeing quite a number of retweets uh, KTN retweeting for me um, on some of the questions and comments that are coming through mm -hmm. um, What? Okay, nose rings, somebody's asking about nose rings What do you think about that? Are nose rings, those? again, I would steer clear of them in most circumstances but mm -hmm. again, if you're you know, working in the entertainment field that might be acceptable Okay. but if you're, say, if you're going in for an interview with that nose ring, I would say take out that nose ring. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, as I said, you want to be probably a little bit more, more conservative. Yes. And conservative. Mm -hmm. Atieno Okeo says, what do you do when speaking to someone with a heavy accent and you feel bad because you keep asking them to repeat themselves? Uh, yeah, now the accent, that's the 600-pound uh, yeah. gorilla in the room. Now, mm -hmm. you know, this is our country, we love it. 43 right. different accents. But what I would say with regards to accents it's mm -hmm. you want to be authentic of course this is the way that you speak this is how you were raised however yes. it's more about enunciation and pronunciation mm -hmm. so open your mouth speaking clearly speaking slowly especially if you have a strong sort of regional um, regional influence in yes. terms of how you speak but at no point would I ever say that you need to adopt some sort of accent from outside of a country. You mm -hmm. need to be authentic and that's the way you speak, that's the way you speak. If it is too heavy mm -hmm. and people, you know, sort of, as he says, keep asking you, what can you do, then you may go for, it's, it's, it's actually called in the business accent reduction. It is not about removing the accent, mm -hmm. but it's about taking away some of these heavier inflections. That Turning might it be, down. That might be, you know, that might be jeopardizing your chances of being a little bit more successful. Yeah. And again, some of this, a lot of this just has, has to do with how you enunciate, how you open your mouth, and how you breathe, pausing, using different vocal variety yeah. in terms of how you speak. What if it's the other way around? The person who's interviewing or, you know, questioning the one with the heavy accent that you keep asking, hey, clarify this. What did you say? At that point, you have no option. You, you have need no to option. understand you what, the, yeah, question what is. the question is. So if you have to keep asking, that's, that's nothing. There's nothing you can do about you that. Can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mi misconceptions when it comes to image that you've come across. Some of the things that are widely misunderstood, mm. people think this is the way it should be done or this is really what okay. sells and flies that you could quickly run us through. So there's no one size fits all. Yeah. And it's not about, I have to wear a suit and a tie or wear a skirt suit in order to be successful in yes. this world. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. You can dress appropriately, but you also need to know the rules. Mm. Okay? You need to equip yourself so that if you're in a situation that calls for you to dress up, you know exactly how to do it. Um, also, misconception I get that image is, is only about dressing mm. it's a lot more than that yeah um i mean even in terms of which we've not talked about about the inside for yes. example your attitude emotional intelligence mm -hmm. you need to look at yourself as an entire package and that entire package should cover all facets remember mm. it's how you're seen it's how you're heard and how you're remembered mm. it is not just about how i am i'm dressing okay all right, um, so we'll end it there, Derek. Uh, but your takeaway for everybody watching at home, because uh, someday, which the question has just disappeared, but was asking about, so if uh, at the end of the day I feel I have done all that I can in mm. as far as image is concerned, working on myself, I like that you bring that out. You'd mentioned earlier consistency. Mm. But the element of truth that sometimes we stretch it a little bit on day one and then, you know, slowly people will go back to their comfortable yes. zones. But it's important to maintain that consistency. Yes, it's important to maintain that consistency. We're yeah. human beings. I mean, I do these trainings and people will be fantastic for the first few months or the first few weeks. And then, yes. you know, you hear people sort of slipping back to mm. their old ways and it's just about sort of refreshing yourself, remembering your brand is on show 24-7. Right. Your brand is on show online offline so what you're tweeting about what you put out there whether you're at church yeah um you know whether you're at the supermarket or in the office so yes it's am i always on show 
unfortunately, you are yeah. always on yeah. show. Always. I'm not saying that you can't enjoy life. I'm not saying that you can't have a good time. But you've got to be aware. You have no idea when you're going to meet your target market, somebody that might change your life mm -hmm. professionally or personally. And you don't ever want to be apologizing for either something that you're yeah. doing or something that you are, that, that is not appropriate in terms of how you're behaving or that you're wearing. There's nothing worse than saying, oh, I'm so sorry, today I'm like this, but come and see me tomorrow. Yeah. You want to be on point All anytime the time. you run into someone. Yeah, you don't want to be partying and taking shots and crazy things that you may be doing, know that that is wrong. And then tomorrow at the interview, it's the guy who was, you know, shot with you and you were crazy. We didn't even have a insane. chance to talk about some yeah. of those things online and what's happening and on online, Facebook and yeah. Twitter, but you've, you've got to be important really aware that your brand is now uh, is now online. Yeah. Yes. So you're a full, it's a full circle. It's not just one element, it's not just what you're wearing, sure. but it's what you're putting out on Facebook, sure. those comments on Twitter, whatever it is you're um, signed up, but also what you're doing when you're out with your friends, hanging out in your machoma, exactly. those road trips. People are watching all the time. Yeah. Unless you're alone in some room, I guess that's the only place you can <laughs> let loose. But other than that, yeah, it gotta be. Once you step out the doors of your house, Yes then your brand is on show for everyone it's to on see. Show for everybody you are, it's on show The whole world's a stage and role actors in it. I like to say yeah. that as well. Derek Banga, that's what he's saying on your image, how important and significant it is. He's a communications consultant with Public Image. And people can find you on Twitter on? Yes, they can find me at, at Derek Banga. That's D-E-R-E-K double B, B-B-A-N-G-A. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can also go to my website, which is publicimageafrica.com. Publicimageafrica.com is where you can find Derek Banga or at D E R E K double B A N G A. Got that right? Yes. Okay, that's why we ended today, this uh, morning, 9 02. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Fantastic.